All right, there, now that we're actually live. But yeah, I, I hadn't actually seen the full Red Band trailer, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, it was cool. I liked the, the Red Band trailers. So it was uh, nice. I will say, I think it's, a, it's something that uh, Gunn does really well, is he's able to take characters and does and make the movie that they need to have mm -hmm. not every movie needs to be captain america and not every movie needs to be batman versus superman right like not every character i think ant-man's a good example of that too where you need to tailor the movie to fit the character and i think mm -hmm. that uh james gunn is especially good at doing that in the context of the superhero movies. I mean, obviously his Guardians movies are a great example of that and are pretty much universally liked. I can't really like, I mean, obviously there's people who don't like them, but I think they're in general considered good movies, well-written. And I think this is going to be the same thing. And I'm hoping it'll bring some more spark to DC because they're, they just, they gotta get to get, more going is the problem the problem has never been necessarily they don't have this stuff working because they they're always going to have diehard fans that are going to come my problem with dc is the batman effect in that every movie and every comic has to be all batman and so uh -huh. if they make things that aren't batman i feel like they're gonna do better you know what I mean? They're going to be able to branch <laughs> branch out. Not, not saying that they don't do Batman well or they don't do Batman. Do well with Batman, but it's a hallmark of any good like company to have your s secondaries also making good money. Huh. So I'm excited for it. It looks good. I, honestly, this has been, despite you know the whole COVID thing, to, this year has actually been relatively pretty good for like comic book superhero stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, at least it's been con uh, getting some good stuff coming out. Um... For sure, for sure. I did check out uh, Godzilla and I still King have Kong to. Last, I still uh, have to check that one. I was gonna go was on good. Saturday or Sunday. I liked it. I enjoyed it for what it was. There was some kind of like funny moments there, but uh, it was it was good. I, I liked it. Good fight scenes was what I was wanting basically. What, once again, it, it's one of those things where I'm of the opinion that it's it's honestly hard to mess up a Godzilla movie. It is not like. No offense to the classic Godzilla movies, but it is not like some complicated, you know, very hard to replicate formula that makes Godzilla successful. You know, mm -hmm. big monster fights, a little bit of human drama thrown in between big monster fights. And so I'm I, I knew this was going to be good since we had seen the last Godzilla. You know what I mean? I, I had been really just happy with the direction they went from the last Godzilla and realizing like this movie's about Godzilla. We probably should show more than 5% of the film, which they did. They did a good job. They did great in uh, the last Godzilla movie. I'm excited for this. They did good in Kong Skull Island, in my opinion, even with it's some up and downs. I thought it was a good entry into the universe. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm excited yeah. for it. I want to, I want to go see it. I just haven't, gotten to go i i think i'm gonna take my brother because he wants to go watch it as well so yeah we just don't have no idea if they're gonna go forward with it i mean i heard uh, they made pretty good money on it it's yeah just, i uh, think as long I as people are know. happy and yeah if they made good money i think they'll go forward with it i mean yeah hopefully they, yeah because they I, have I the titles to go more with uh yeah they, they have some more of the license rights yeah, to some and, like monsters and well and it's one thing that always gets me is Especially once again for the even Marvel as well, where it's like, look, you have the titles to these characters. And I understand a reluctance to put all your money in, right? This is an expensive business making films and TV shows. But relatively speaking, with few exceptions like the Inhumans or, you know what I mean? Something like that. They're profitable. Even the mm -hmm. even even the not universally great ones that or ones that are not like you know thor 2 and you know stuff like that they make good money you know what i mean they make uh -huh. good money and bring in enough revenue and merchandising and stuff to be viable so i'm hoping they push forward with it i i don't after these two movies their reactions the amount of uh discussion they put into the community you know what i mean all i see are godzilla and kong memes you know what i mean since the movie came out so well that and some new Dora Milaje ones, but 
<laughs> yeah, that's that been great. Yeah. That was a good, uh, good episode too. That oh, absolutely. Like Honestly, I'm very impressed. Uh, I will say that it's different. I'm impressed with Falcon and Winter Soldier in a different way than I was for WandaVision. So WandaVision for me was very much... Um, obviously, there was a, it was a pretty decent story and they had good acting, but I was very impressed with the technical production like how everything about it was very much themed towards the idea and the concept of the the tv show the mind slash reality warping and it, it was very well crafted right that's why i enjoyed wandavision i feel like i'm enjoying winter soldier and uh the falcon falcon and winter soldier because the characters who were not fully developed and fleshed out before are being kind of, I guess, more fully fleshed out and developed, but even beyond that, are being put into the main view, right? Like, they get to be the stars of this show, and it pulls out a different aspect of them. Between, and once again, it's, it's something Marvel does pretty well in balancing comedy and seriousness. You know what I mean? You have tons of good comedy in the episodes, such as Zemo dancing, any of the, the, the small bickering... Uh, you know the what are the, the the three mains man aliens robots and wizards <laughs> you know just stuff like that that's very funny and cool and 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 nice you know what I mean and then you have more deep and serious scenes like the scene we got with Bucky in the last episode which was very good you know it was very good uh, writing in my opinion and acting and just all around nice and then obviously uh, the whole ending which I don't want to spoil too much for people watching but you know the whole ending with the Dora Milaje was something everybody wanted, you know, to kind of see this. I, I honestly really enjoyed the episode. I think by the end of it, I was just like yelling, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh -huh. motherfucking yeah, because I one, I was happy to see the Dora Milaje depicted in what I felt. I honestly felt like they even buffed the Dora Milaje a little bit for this, but I'm OK with it because it's the Dora Milaje. So I'm, I'm good with it. Because <laughs> the, the Dora Malaje are proficient fighters and definitely, you know, super skilled. But uh, especially the f not Okoye versus uh, Bucky, obviously, because that was kind of like that was a there was a whole story behind that, right? With the arm mm -hmm. and and there's a reason for that. But more so that the. Uh, the overall fighting expertise of the Dora Lilaje was like very super, super high level in this. And they are very, very good. But in the comics, I feel like the Dora Milaje take more L's than they they're given credit for. <laughs> 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 Same with Black Panther's guards. They're as strong as they need to be until like a main character shows up mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, main character power. <laughs> no. Um yeah. Let's see here. With uh, so I was gonna go through some of my list here too. I guess I uh, I do want to say Neca surprised us with a uh, reveal of the gargoyles. So they are oh, they got the license be to awesome. do that. And they uh, show this Goliath as one of their first ones that they're doing. And I they mean, that's, have, like, that one's the, very the much a cult classic. So yeah, yeah. So I've been watching some gargoyles again, <laughs> just I, to get ready for that. The funny thing is, I actually owned the gar the whole thing of gargoyles before it went back up on Disney. Oh, I just really, yeah, I really like it. it's one. Of, actually, it's probably one of the better cartoons ever made in terms of yeah. like pure story writing, animation, continuous voice acting. Like it's got it pretty much scores high on every category for a cartoon. Mm -hmm. You know what's funny is I was looking at the seasons, and the first season I think was like 13 episodes, and then second season was like 50 of the episodes, and then third season was like 13 episodes. Yeah. You gotta remember, man, it was the 90s. I just thought that was so funny. I was like, wow, 58 well, episodes for one season. Well, back when that was how long episodes were, you know what I mean? Or mm -hmm. sometimes they were 20 or seasons where sometimes they were 24, but you either had a full scheduled year or a quarter year slash half year and so uh -huh. the way they used to work and why that one worked is you would get the first episode or the first season got cleared right so then uh -huh. you would run the pilot usually then you would get your first season you'd finish the season and once you finish your season they'd see how many toys you sold 
Right, yeah. Because <laughs> especially back in the 90s, before the proliferation That's, of F- entertainment. Everything with was toy sales. Oh, absolutely. Or, or commercials, but yeah, it's mostly toy sales for kids' shows. Absolutely. Um, and it doesn't work too much that way anymore now. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's kind of switched. switched. It's, it's switched the other way. Now adults buy toys and kids watch on net. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But uh, and it's just, it's funny too, because like there does not need to be a show now. They're just, we'll just buy it now because like we want that. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, true. But that's because there's, you know, 30 years of being an adult yeah, and having no, watched that show before. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I do yeah, agree, though, that there's a uh, different thing. And, and once again, I that, that same, you know, feel like, you know, when we were growing up that there was these, oh, hey, we, well, here's our favorite show. Well, if you like that show, here's a toy to play with it. Well, and and that wait, it, it really is. It's still around. You know, I see a commercial once in a while for like a Lego Sometimes. set. I see but, everyone's but, while, yeah. but I will admit that probably around 2000 is the break off for like the generation of kids who grew up with like toys from shows and And really, that's the point of the shows was to make toys, right? Like Mm He-Man, right? He-Man's the perfect example of that. And he's back. Which they, I think yeah, is good. Mattel, Mattel, yeah, came up. Yeah, they're like, they're going full on out. They, uh, uh, he's a good property, man. I mean, he, yeah. he's, he's typically and classically been well received. They, uh, Super 7, who's a toy maker company, they made a Snake Mountain, uh, one, which was freaking huge. They sold, that that awesome, they sold for like $500, though. I, I, I honestly, <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I, I am not a toy collector realistically, and I would buy Snake Mountain because <laughs> <laughs> I grew up playing with He Man toys, so yeah, I mean, we, so my, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I see a couple He Man stuff here and there now, and then now they're doing like little uh miniature He Man because what they did is they redid the retro. Yeah, uh, the He-Man. old school ones. Yeah, I know the ones yeah, from the eighties and nineties. Articulated is all a little That's bit more. That's pretty cool though, because the old ones, the old ones are actually pretty good for the time. They were fairly, mm-hmm. fairly well. Obviously, nowhere near what they make nowadays with Super Seven and and NECA and everybody. Well, obviously different companies, but they they were good toys for the time. Yeah. There was a reason that they did well, and you know, spawned TV show or cartoon or whatever. And I don't know. I'm I'm of the once again of the opinion where it's it's really tough because we, we come from that era, right? Where that collecting, uh, physical media, you know what I mean? Of like that's what we grew up with, right? There were comics and toys, and sometimes a video game. Sometimes I would get a video game, yeah, right? Every once but. In a while. But in general, right? I think right, in the 2000s is when right, we started that, and, giving, like, the yeah. video game every oh, day. <laughs> Absolutely. And I even mean just in the general sense of having general access to video games. Don't get me wrong, yeah. there were PlayStation stuff, but until about 2000, it was not, like, generally affordable no. for every kid. Especially no. kids like me and you who grew up in maybe not, like, the best neighborhoods all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just like, ah, oh, yeah, it's fine, man. It's just the north side and the east side. It's fine. But... <laughs> But so, you know, what runs around 2000 came and video games became a cheaper, right? Like you buy a $200 system and then whatever game you want for 50 bucks or 30 bucks back in the day, whatever the price was. And it suddenly became easier, right, to have video games than to have toys, which it was not necessarily the case back before 2000. And... I think that's the the one of the reasons why. Obviously, I think inter- the internet and phones are another big one because that's where I see kids a lot is on like phones yeah. or or you know, and not to say be critical of it either way. Just noticing that is you know the difference of our times. Trend. Yeah, it's just different. I I think I really would like like to see more playing with toys because there's something about it that's very socially dynamic Mm -hmm. but i i do understand that that you know what i mean the world moves in weird ways with the times and stuff so we'll see if we'll see if toys make a resurgence i'd love for toys to make a resurgence back (laughs) for kids but i'm also fine if they're just like nice super nice things for adults like us now you know who actually you know and to be fair, adults were always the ones buying the toys. It's just yeah. now they're also the ones playing. Yeah. Playing with the toys. <laughs> no, it's cool. Um, 
you know, if, so it looks like Rick and Marty will be coming back, which is I'm really not that surprised that they're coming back so soon after the, all these uh, that they always give us. The, you uh, know, it's supposed to come back June 20th. You know, the thing is, I feel like some of the pressure let up off of them, which was helped. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe there was just yeah, too much I pressure. I feel like for after, yeah, show. like after the second season, even beyond the I want the show now, I feel like it's that pressure of being like a, a media icon, right? Like you're yeah. you're you're constantly it, getting barraged and you need to make they're expecting another product equal to or better mm -hmm. than what you've already delivered, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's basically everyone's expectation, which is not a realistic one, right? Like, it can't just continuously get better forever. Um, no, there's going to be some bad episodes right, here. Right, it'll there. roll up and down. And it's the same with comics, movies, everything. There is no... I never watched or read anything that was good every single page or every single... Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, but I don't know. I think that once the pressure let off where people weren't like yelling at them to get episodes out and and not expecting like every single episode or every season to be like the 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 most, you know, what the original season of Rick and Morty was, which was kind of off the wall, not you know done somewhat not but done before it, it it was obviously pulled off of other things but it was very unique yeah you know what i mean yeah and as much as it is still unique it's just wore off you know what i mean it's it's been here for years now and so it's not new mm -hmm. uh and i think that helped a lot with them pushing out episodes but i mean who knows? Maybe they maybe just stop drinking. <laughs> no, no, no. Stop getting blackout drunk while recording Rick's lines. That might help. No offense to the guy. I just say with the that was generally something that's known. That's what they were saying, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, if you guys want your fix of kind of some of what the same kind of Rick and Morty ish, um, they have the Solar Opposites that came out a couple of weeks ago on Hulu. Um, which is the most guys. It's just one of the creators that does. I was gonna say, this. is that the one I'm thinking of, or is the is the, there are um, the aliens from a different planet that come? Yeah, to I've been Earth. waiting for this. I thought, oh no, that's the new season came out, right? Yeah, the second okay. season. Just came I was out. gonna say this one had been out for a while. That I'd seen mm -hmm. it where they're like aliens Have adapting you to yet? you. I've watched like an episode or two. I just haven't. Okay. I I haven't even caught up on Rick and Morty to be honest. Ah, I see. You should I, check out the Solar Opposites. I really like it. The one that's really my favorite part of the whole show is. Uh, once you get to it, they they call it the wall. It's basically where one of the bounty hunters, the little one, he um every time he sees somebody like doing wrong or just being really bad, he ends up shrinking the the, the person and takes them and puts them in this ant sized farm. And there are all these people just in this farm in like an apocalyptic. Uh, world trying to survive and it, it, it gets very serious in this world yeah that's, that's funny my, that's, that's literally everyone's favorite part usually sometimes so everyone's like they should just do a spin-off of the wall <laughs> <laughs> but uh anyways it, it's a good show i like it there's a uh, there's some pretty good ones uh but last uh this season was pretty good they did do an episode of uh where one of them was getting picked on so much and one of the aliens had suggested, you know, well, why don't you just get, you know, build yourself up, get all built up and you can get beat stacked, these guys up. Me. And uh, she's like, no, it's a dumb idea. And he ends up going to there, right? And he, he sees these bodybuilders and he's like, you know, how do, how do I, you know, how do I stop these bullies? And he's like, bro, if you're really honest with you, doing a uh, lifting up's not gonna do it he's like you gotta be like that guy over there and he looks over there's so all these girls all up on him and he's like whoa and then uh he's all shining to the guy and he goes what's the what's he got he's like he's got bde what's bde big, big dick, dick energy, energy. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was gonna say that. So it's a whole episode of that, and uh, it's it's hilarious. There's they got some pretty good episodes in there. There's even one where they uh, he um, they kind of like create these wolf predator dogs, and uh, he, they end up beating some of the people, and they they poop them out as wine bottles. Because <laughs> they were talking about wine, drinking wine, and oh, this is from Brew. They were one of those like kind of gentrified kind of right. uh, episodes, and gotcha. so. That, that okay. one was also pretty good, but uh, yeah, like I said, check, check them out when you can. I think that's another thing that helps uh, creators when their works are slower or especially as being an artist myself, when I have blocks, it's it's better to go work on something else. 
Mm-hmm. I'll have more ideas for the thing that I'm not working on when I'm not. You know what I mean? Like if I yeah. stay obsessed over something I'm stuck on, I'm just going to stay obsessed and stuck on it. You have to like leave, come back, clear your mind. And I think that after season two or three, I'm not sure which one, uh, both Dan Harmon and uh, fuck, who's the other one? I don't remember the other guy. Uh, um, I forget. I, I literally name. just can't remember. Justin Roland, yeah, Justin Roland. Yeah, which that, is the one I think Justin does the solar opposites. So this yes. is his, his right. Uh, and both of them have been doing. I think Justin more so than Dan Harmon, but uh, I know that Roland has done this and then another project. Oh, that he's was got on Earth. Yeah, he has something else. Uh, fuck, what was it? Unless that was Dan Harmon, and I'm, I'm tripping balls. I'm gonna check it real quick because it wasn't too long ago but it's it's before the solar opposites oh that's cool i didn't know he was in in, in invincible <laughs> oh my. oh you know what's, what's funny was that uh, seth rogan was invincible i was I did, I, I did know that yeah i heard I there were a couple what? they actually got a couple pretty interesting like cameos the voice acting in that show is like spot on i think like jk it's pretty good Simmons is pretty good as omni man and i like, they did good for the Steven casting june as um uh, oh, what's his name uh, invincible. One the th- yeah one of the things i'm most impressed about honestly with invincible is their music choice oh my gosh bro when the brothers come out the twins and the run the jewels starts playing yeah, yeah. every crazy. time too it's always for them run the jewels which is great and i think that it's important that people it's one of the things that and I know we had differing opinions on it, but it was one of my issues with Zack Snyder's Justice League is I think music is incredibly important to be themed in the sense that not like a character needs a theme song or a theme score necessarily, but that whatever song you're playing needs to match the emotional and direction and even sometimes the overall content of whatever's going on. and. There are so many songs out there that you should be able to find a good song that fits all three of those criteria every single time. Uh, a good example of that was the song they were playing during the Suicide Squad trailer. Yeah, that was a pretty good song choice. James Gunn always does a pretty good job. He's, I think, he's amazing at soundtracks. I was about to say, we're going to get another mixtape off of the Suicide Squad. You know that, right? But that's <laughs> not the... You know he's going to do that, but uh, which is fine. I enjoy it. And I think, once again, he picks songs for the most part james gunn and two did a lot of different stuff but i think he was going for a different tone so that's why it was but i still felt like they were very much always picked and themed right not just the tone of the music but the lyrics themselves are very relevant to whatever's kind of going on in the scene or at least the energy is super heavily matching and i'm i feel like invincible does that very very well like they pick it and they're not that's the other reason I'm impressed is they weren't afraid to use hip hop. Yeah, I feel that was like cool. I feel like for whatever reason obviously hip hop being not a necessarily child or family friendly appropriate format all the time but with the availability of options once again nowadays I don't see the reason why you can't have good hip hop music in in scores and stuff for comic stuff and so yeah. seeing it done there as well as done with uh loot uh not sorry falcon and winter soldier did the same thing they used some hip-hop as well oh, yeah, as some like uh funk 70s there was some, uh, there was some memes on that uh scene when they're walking in through the oh yeah the they, oh yeah they, somebody did uh did dance, they were doing the gangster's paradise <laughs> <I didn't laughs> most my life. and then we of course got i love the have you have you seen the whole meme of release the snyder Cut? No, we want an hour of Zemo dancing. Okay. <laughs> no, but oh, you know what's funny is like every time I go onto the HBO, because uh, every time they post something HBO Max, if you go in the comments row, literally everyone's just saying hashtag restore the Snyderverse in the comments. Like literally, you can't even say anything in there because like as soon as you go into the next page, it just says nothing but restore the Snyderverse. Next page, yep. same thing. I'm like, oh my gosh, these guys are not stuff. <laughs> the, the messed up part is they, they don't understand the actions like that as opposed to like, you know, crowdfunding. Oh yeah. Some so one of the higher ups got fired after that. This whole de- de- debacle of the yeah. Snyder. 
it's oh. been back and forth to be fair you could describe that to anything though and this is what i keep telling people is if you're not paying attention to the background of what's going on wb is either getting ready to sell dc or does just doesn't give a shit i don't know yeah there's been they've a been, lot of they've been, well. it, they've been yeah. cutting down on staff they've been cutting down on all kinds they've honestly been making terrible business decisions i just i don't know every if end it's at&t's fault not understanding like not caring for that side of the business of the comic world they're just e- like yeah even comics, so yeah. right and even if so that the sense of like there's they're only going to be able to cut do this for so long before once again I, people have like a very false sense of how things are going in comics and stuff all the time right like comic companies are always just this side of going out of business mm-hmm. like the comic company themselves right not necessarily the movies studios attached to them or the companies that own them but relatively speaking in the sense that they are this close to not meeting their profit margins and hitting the goals expected of them of their parent companies kind of stuff like that due to a wide variety of reasons right it's not necessarily all their fault it has to deal with the emergence of new media technologies the death of old print kind of stuff like that but i feel like dc in particular for a couple years has not put in the effort yeah yeah and and some of it is they lack creative control and i know jim lee's been doing his best as i guess as he could you know i mean with when he did the whole rebirth stuff that was that was a good start of everything but then rebirth has been the best decision except for maybe the recent dark knights metal stuff that they've done in 10 to 20 years Mm -hmm. since the death of superman probably because realistically speaking, and people don't like to hear it, they'll they'll say otherwise for time and time again. But DC has not outsold Marvel Comics since about 20, 2000. It, Marvel is consistently sells more comic books in general, right? Not necessarily the number one comic book, but overall category numbers, whether it's due to their marketing decisions or their publications actually being superior, which I don't really believe they are i just think they make better marketing decisions and have a better creative control center Mm -hmm. i I feel much of the time with the exception of a lot of the dc's events right like rebirth or the dark metal stuff that dc doesn't have a very good sense of connection stories don't feel connected the universe doesn't feel all together whereas i feel that way a lot more with marvel in that a lot of the connecting issues are purposefully pushed to that, right? Like they're very, very purposeful. Yeah, and I feel like that's just because too, they, they do a good job of, you know, getting together mm-hmm. with those, what they call them, those Marvel camps, yeah. they call them. Yep, they get together they about once a year. About like, hey, what are we going to do for this year, guys? Exactly. Well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to well, do that. The other thing they do, and it's something DC succeeded at when they had Scott Snyder doing just Batman stuff, was that they give creative control of a character to one person Uh when when jason aarons is on thor that's who's in charge of thor you go to jason aarons and ask how you you can incorporate thor into your story you don't write your story and then tell jason aarons you wrote thor in it you know what i mean Uh and the same for donny cates right now on venom the same for hickman whenever he takes a title like they're basically marvel says we know you do good work we trust the your judgment on this and we're going to put you in charge of this character. Now obviously yeah. they they have oversight, right? They have people yeah. they answer to and they have a bigger it's picture. There, there, yeah, but yeah, if you but you and me have both read the new X-Men series and I can say with 99% doubt uh Hickman didn't let them edit more than two pages. <laughs> <laughs> you see those uh I- iconographic spreads or whatever the graphic we we're, we we've, we've talked about it in the x-men series how he's been doing the uh informational panels right the pages mm-hmm. of like information history breakdowns a note from somebody yeah something that that was talked about you know a panel ahead and then they're kind of discussed going a little right, bit right right like it'll be yeah. this is how mutant magic works or this is the overall structure of Krakoa's biome or some shit, you know what I mean? Just some contextual information for the story 
and that's Hickman, right? That's 100% Hickman. Nobody else does that. I don't think I've ever seen somebody use infographics that much. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little jarring sometimes don't get me wrong yeah sometimes i feel like oh, i don't want to read this you wrote too much right now I just <laughs> sometimes they're too long i will say that usually the mo majority of them are general context pages it's when he does things that are like whole notes from somebody to somebody else like the whole mission briefing on Somebody, you know, this mission is like, oh, we were in Madrid, and then not you know, even giving the full everything. It's there. Some things are blacked out of who, oh, who it some was. Of them are, that's true. The earlier ones do that. Lately, he hasn't really been blacking anything out for uh, the info panel stuff. I mean, you'll still get one or two here and there. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but there are times when it's done to to really good effects. So, like one of the, my favorite ones when he did that was during the X of Swords event. Uh, pretty much once every other. Once a, a couple pages, you would get a spread that described the sword that they were talking about, which if you were a super big history Marvel c comics fan, you probably didn't need. Right. Like you knew all the swords by name. You knew where they came from, how they were made, what they do. But for, for someone who is not fully invested in Marvel comics, I mean, shit, I didn't even know some of those swords. <laughs> I'm fucking I knew most of them but there was I think I didn't know about the Wakandan blade which I'm not even sure if it existed before this comic because I didn't check you know what I mean uh, yeah shit like that and so I, I think it can be done well and differently but I think it's just once again a good example of right that whole series does that the Ev Marauders fucking X-Men Excalibur <clears throat> you can tell Jonathan Hickman is in charge of this shit right now, right? Like, and I think that's what DC needs. Somebody, people to take charge of characters, to take charge of sections and stop like kind of sticking their fingers in each other's pudding. You know what I mean? And, and kind of messing it all up. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, yeah, we'll just have to see what AT&T does. I just, I don't know. They, they seem to be messed. And then, well, that, now that we were talking about that. Did you hear about the news of what uh, Marvel did now? What did they do and, this uh, time? They are. Uh, I don't. I didn't fully read on it, but to me, it sounded like they're they're moving to the Penguin House Publishing. I did hear about that actually. Yeah. Now that I now that you talk about that, I don't think it's a good move. But I, I, but I I don't know if that was like Sta like set in was, stone. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it was like for. I don't know. We'll have to I see how this right. I don't have enough information on it yet. I, I'll say the same thing I said though for DC. Like, I, I don't think it's a good idea. Well, are they totally moving away from Diamond? Is the question? Or are they I just? That's what I thought when I was trying to read up on it. I didn't see like Here, they were see totally if moving we could... away from it. It sounded like they were just trying to reach more markets. I guess is what it sounded like more. But not, I don't think they were going to do it through comic book sales because, like, I couldn't see a Barnes and Nobles, you know, having like a a newsstand or something, that, you know, in there. You'd be surprised. I mean, we've so talked maybe, about how they've been pushing those Justice League giants at Walmart. Yeah. Well, you know what's funny too? I had seen a uh, Dark Metal Knight commercial on Adult Swim. I was like, really? Wow. They they're marketing now to TV, which is, I mean, a pretty good idea. They should start doing things like that, you know, if they want to get more. Uh, audience and stuff because the way they do it now it's just only if you are a person that just kind of happens to walk into a comic store and then you get your marketing kind of through that way but you won't get it through like you know the regular day-to-day -day watching through the tv or radio even or something like that um so i thought that was kind of that was cool to see that it was a really nice little <laughs> yeah. ad for them he even said the artist and the writers, Greg Capullo. <laughs> so, cool. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody knows. Well, not everybody. I think everybody who wants to know about Greg Capullo knows about Greg Capullo. <laughs> you've you've seen his work if you like his work. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's very popular in his area. Uh, so I'm looking at um, some stuff, just some different writings. And it looks like they are looking to pl replace Diamond with Penguin. Okay, so it's eventually they will do it. I, I mean, I, 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 I there, there are a lot of. I mean, they are a bigger. Well, I don't know. Are they a bigger distribution? Oh, absolutely. Company? Yeah. Right? No, not even a question. 
Yeah, see, if, so you were, if you were to talk about general distribution, right? Like we're talking general distribution. Penguin House Publishing publishes pretty much shit. everything. Right? Nah, not <laughs> everything, but shit. They probably own a tenth or a quarter of all publications at this point, I guess. Okay. They're they're famous. They're they're popular, and they're they usually. Let me see. Penguin yeah. Random House. Let's see what. Uh, let's see what we got. Uh, committed to the publishing of great books. Uh, Random House is an American book publisher and the largest general interest paperback publisher in the world. All yeah. right, well, that answered my question. Uh, but, but it is actually owned by Germany. Mm, okay. Suck it, America. Yeah, it's been around since 1927. They, now, here's where it gets interesting, and here's where the conversation comes in on two ends. All right, let's talk about Marvel's end. Marvel's out for Marvel, right? They're just trying to make money, sell more books. Yeah. While Penguin House is absolutely the apparently the largest paperback publisher in the world, and they are very, very heavily, you know, they have subsidiaries for children's books. They are they they have markets. I don't know if they have comics. I don't know what their distribution market looks like, how their model is, no, or any I'm, of that. You know, I when I was no going idea. to Isaiah school, you know, they they start, they did have a lot more of graphic novels. I didn't know this. No, I, and I I'm don't sure... think I remember growing up on a lot of that, you know, going to the book no, clubs. No, I, I think we didn't have that. I think it's new that graphic novels in about 2010 kind of became a thing for hmm. regular bookstores. Because I remember going, obviously you could go to the Barnes & Noble manga section, but I would go to Barnes & Noble and you would see graphic novels of things that were not comics or manga. Yeah. So I would see like an odd Thomas comic that Marvel did yes. make, but it was not a comic property, right? Like these things yeah. were branching out. <clears throat> and so I do think graphic novels actually took an upturn in regular interests in about 2010. So I think there's somewhat a market for it. I'm just not sure. Once again, their model, how the deliveries are. We've, we've talked about some of the issues people have with diamond is in packaging. Yeah, that's, in, that's the one thing that, yeah, we, we, we just, it. And then I just, just don't know your, your stuff sometimes like right them. yeah right like, and, yeah. and so we will consider the two different possibilities right one possibility well there's many 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 possibilities whatever but the two distinct possibilities are that the switch is good right that they can sell more comics they make more money more people read the books the distribution is better right there's better packaged that's the ideal good situ situation, right? Like, that's the ideal scenario that this is actually really good for them. And then the bad scenario would be that it's less effective, doesn't get them as much market, is worse packaging, less deliveries, right? The whole... And then yeah. everything else lands in between that spectrum. And so for me, I I don't know. I, I You would assume that they'll make a little more business working with Penguin. Yeah, just yeah. just by the the distribution venues. I think Penguin's even more available right in other countries. Yeah, I think they do more translations. I, I can't be certain. I'm just assuming based on the fact they're the largest uh, publisher of paperbacks in the world. I can't I don't know. Right. And I think that's the real thing about this is the same thing we talked about with Lunar in that even though I didn't think it was a good idea and I don't think it's a good idea for the same reasons, I don't think it's a good idea for Marvel. Uh, that, you know, it might work. We have no clue, but because yeah. we don't know, it's a shot in the dark. It's a gamble. Yeah. Um, I mean, it is good for some notes on too, because, you know, Diamond does have a monopoly on the whole thing. And it, it does. But here's why it's bad. And here's where it comes from the other side. Why would it actually bad for everybody else? So. Diamond is the monopoly. Uh, one of the reasons Diamond is a monopoly is it owns the debt of most of the comic book companies in the country. And it forestalls that debt so that they can continue to operate. Right? Uh -huh. That's this is this is pretty much a general fact that a good portion of comic book companies nowadays are running off of Diamond's goodwill. The fact that Diamond has not called in their debts and said, you need to pay us the money you owe us. Mm -hmm. If Marvel drops Diamond, and the fact that DC has already kind of been moving away from Diamond, 
that is accounts for about 80 percent of all of their publishing yeah and so yeah, and so Great. suddenly diamond will have to make up for that revenue and that will include calling in debts from comic book stores yeah and there will be a massive amount of comic book stores shutting down around the country if this goes through and that's just the truth like there's there's no ifs ands or buts like it sucks that it is that way and once again it's partially because diamond does hold a monopoly but unless we support our comic book stores to the point point where they get out of debt and can switch to these new publishers like penguin house or whatever penguin random we're going to see another downturn in comics that we haven't seen in quite a while and that would be unfortunate <sighs> so that's why i was hoping that they weren't completely leaving diamond but I mean, once again, it's I can't harsh Marvel for doing this. Just it, kind of in the same way I can't harsh Diamond for calling in their debts, right? Like everybody's just doing business. Yeah. Every, all of them are just trying to make money and make a living. It granted, it sucks for us because this is it's not business for us, right? Like this is personal and entertainment and enjoyment and parts of our lives that we've come to come deeply ingrained with right like over 20 30 40 plus years for people uh or even more you know what i mean for the for older people who read superman actually back in the golden age and stuff and so right. i i don't think it's a good idea to move away from diamond i do i i always agree that diamond needs more competition because they're yeah. just lazy and well they yeah, they've, yeah. they've gotten comfortable to that that mm -hmm. point where they're Yep. They let books get missed. They get let books get damaged really bad. Even like the high ratio end books that are supposed to, you know, comic stores are supposed to make their ends meet on off of, they end up becoming damaged. And then, yeah, they don't usually end up getting another copy of a, a replacement copy or I don't know. Yeah. There's just a lot of things that yep. they got very comfortable with. And uh, yeah. So I, I could see both ends being kind of a double edged sword here. Once again, it's rough. I, I don't blame Marvel for leaving, but the fact that they leave will absolutely shut down companies like our uh, stores. That's unfortunate, but true. Mm -hmm. And it and it, it's once again something that wouldn't have happened if Marvel and DC weren't leaving, right? Like if DC was still totally around with Diamond and Marvel went over to Penguin then it wouldn't it wouldn't be so catastrophic but mm -hmm. the fact that dc just who are they with now actually since lunar doesn't they're go still, anymore they're with the other company they um i forgot the, the third one two, yeah there was two of them yeah i know they had two different i think they don't they have another another one i didn't hear anything of that one i swear they because they were they were like branching out they were covering their bases from what i remember who is publishing DC Comics right now because it was Lunar now it's oh that didn't get me at all where I needed well while you're looking that up uh, I heard that Warner Brothers will no longer be moving forward with their New Gods movie and the Trench movie that James Wan was supposed to be directing you know the messed up part to me is that I, I don't necessarily blame them because one the Trench movie is a dumbass idea anyway don't even know why that wasn't what just dumb. I don't know. That was kind of weird. I mean, James Wan would have done probably a good job. He would have been fine because it's James oh, Wan, just... but it's something that doesn't yeah. add to the DCE it's... universe, right? And maybe yeah. he could have made it add to the DCE yeah. universe. Some way, yeah. <laughs> but but realistically, he could have just taken whatever concept he had for Trench, throw Aquaman in, and call it Aquaman Two. Yeah, pretty much. They should have, but. That one, was, what's, I that one was kind of weird. Uh, that's the only one. The New Gods I'm a little iffy about because I actually didn't really... Everyone really loves the New Gods by Jack Kirby, and I didn't give a shit. <laughs> it's just not my favorite comics. I like people after him who took his concepts and evolved them into what they are now. Mm -hmm. But the original New Gods stuff is is a little rough to read for me just because of how old the style of writing yeah. was back then. Yeah. Other um, than that, I mean, you know, that that stuff is good, but I'm what I'm mad at though is that their excuse is the fucking Justice League movie, but it's a bad excuse if they're not going forward with his universe. 
I don't know what they're doing with that. I don't one. know. Who and knows? here's but my thing. I didn't even like this new Snyder version that much better. And I still think like, you know, maybe give this guy his own shot. Don't let him be in charge of DC, but give him like an Injustice mini three movies and let him run his run his course. Mm -hmm. That that was my thing, because we all know this is obviously based off the Injustice timeline. It's 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 pretty much set in stone with the death of Lois. <laughs> like it's not even a question, right? Um, but and as cool as that is, we've talked about how the difficulty and why DC is not as accessible sometimes before, right? Like it's cool to make dark movies, but then kids aren't going to watch it. Yeah, that's that's the, that's their idea, and it's not dumb, you know. It's the business that they want more people it, to come. It's see fine, it. but guess who makes more money? The kids' movies make more money. They just yeah. do, and they always have, right? Like SpongeBob beats the shit out of most most fucking movies. You know what I mean? It just pulls in money because uh -huh. kids like SpongeBob, right? Um, but, so did you just, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. Uh, like I said, it just frustrates me because there is room for a dark and gritty area yeah. and a regular sure. area you know, people, yeah when they did that member that power rangers dark one member yes. and people like, we want that right now <laughs> we were like can we see these murders power rangers please please <laughs> like there is room for both dark and light the stories and once again the so the whole maybe that's what we'll get eventually once they've you know hit their course of like okay guys maybe we'll, we'll just start going the, just the go real question dark. is <sighs> And here's here's the rough part. There's there's the two options, right? You cave in and give the Snyder fans what they want and make less money, right? That's that's an option. Or you don't listen and then you still have trouble because they're out boycotting your other movies and yeah. right, right, yeah, it'd be different if they just didn't go want. I mean, Snyder fans are actively harming WB and then wonder why WB has to cut people. This <laughs> it doesn't make sense, right? Like, if you really cared about the movie studio, then you need to make sure the movie studio is doing well enough to do all these projects you want. Making Godzilla tank or trying to make Godzilla tank because you're unhappy. They do it with every every time they're unhappy about Zack Snyder not getting his way. They do that shit. They've done it to several movies on the DC side. They do it to almost every movie on this Marvel side. They did it to Black Panther, Captain Marvel, fucking... There were whole forum posts that were like, let's get together and review bomb these movies for no good reason. Which is fine if you actively don't like the movie and really don't, but you're literally, like, campaigning and not even having seen the movie, right? Godzilla mm. wasn't even out when they were review bombing it yeah and so it just it's so rough when you have a toxic fan base as your main fan base it's just because that's we're all grown man babies now and uh i just don't get that it is the, the star wars is suffering from it a bit as well i don't know why marvel doesn't seem to suffer from it as much obviously we still have man babies you have wyatt russell receiving death like threats what they're doing i don't know once again yeah. we still suffer from it don't get me wrong Wyatt russell has been receiving yeah. death threats for his captain america although oh, i would I, I, although yeah. I would say that's actually a more of a posit on how good he is at his job <laughs> <laughs> this whole I, job is to be hateable yeah, I mean, now once again i'm not excusing people uh sending why Rus russell death threats that's actually absolutely a shitty thing to do and it does somebody the other day made me really pissed off because they were attributing it all to generation z they're like all these 13 year olds telling people to kill themselves is fucking too young to tell people what to do i'm like all right first of all how old you are should not like matter on when you're telling someone to kill themselves that's just always a shitty thing to do right it doesn't matter if you're 80 fucking years old or a baby that's probably just not a good thing to say right age doesn't have anything to do with that and then to act like 30 year olds our age weren't in call of duty lobbies telling people to go shoot themselves would be a big lie right <laughs> like I, I i know you were in the xbox lobbies back in the day so you know what I'm talking about. Those are toxic. They days. were toxic. And so to pretend that the internet now is any different than it was when we were on it is always so jarring to me. It's it's that kind of the same thing the the millennials right do to or the uh the the uh 
boomers do to the millennials, right? Where it's like, oh, you, all the millennials fault and all the Gen Z's fault. And it's like, it's, everybody's fucked up, bro. It's both sides is right. Once again, even though I say Marvel doesn't do it as much, absolutely still guilty of it. Absolutely still happens. Absolutely still unacceptable, right? Like you shouldn't be giving somebody a death threat for playing a character on TV. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, we'll but, but my point of it was that, man, he does a really good job at his job, though, if they hate him that much. <laughs> I, I, you know, you know, what's funny. My favorite meme was the one that uh, people put the up character and then they put him right next to. Yeah, him. no, like, it's the, with his because, I mean, in the first one, he looked better in the other episodes after yeah, first episode. Did, but that like, first the angle, I think it was the angle that he's at. I know, it he makes looked, him look exactly. just like that guy, like the chin just. It was yeah. funny. And once again, it's fine, man. Like people were pulling it around. It's like, it's like, oh, this and that. It's like, he's supposed to be a knockoff bad uh, yeah, Captain and, America. And I think that's what people just don't know because they don't know that he's really not going to be Captain America. He's going to end up being the U.S. agent here. Right. Like people, anyway. people will, once again, people who aren't familiar with comics, I guess I could get it. But I, I, once again, it looks, it's, it comes to me and I'm like, look, you do understand that even from the offset, this guy is being framed up to be an adversary, not a friend. Yeah. To the whole way through, yeah. Even though at the beginning, he's, he's actually a fairly nice guy for, I was he honestly wants, like. He wants to be, but he. He, is he just does. But it just character. surprised me because the original US agent is kind of just a dick. The whole way through. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I he's a little better in his new comic. Uh, yeah, well, he's he's That's way one, right? he's way better in this one. I think that is a new one. Actually, it might be a new super soul. It might be an entirely new U.S. agent. But if it's not the one that you've seen in the U.S. agent recent comics that were coming out, is so much nicer than all of the U.S. agents. You know who U.S. agent was like? He was mm -hmm. like Ultimate Universe Cap. <laughs> okay. That's the best way to describe him, honestly. And it, it, you know the Ultimate Universe Cap, so. It's, yeah, it's that, one of those. Whole, yeah, that whole Ultimatum story. Like, that whole Ultimate that Universe. That whole universe is, really is on. Really Look, man, story. Bendis, they can talk shit about Bendis all they want, but then I mention a Bendis comic, uh, a comic, and they're like, I love that. And I was like, well, he wrote it. <laughs> I don't know what you want me yeah, to tell he, you. He like, did good when he he's did hitting, his Ultimate. He's hit and sure. miss, man. He's, Bendis, for me, is hit and miss. Some stuff, awesome. Like, I love, people were harshing so hard on his Superman story. I thought it was the most interesting thing they've done with fucking Superman in years. Years. Yeah, people are hating on that one. Which, once out. again, uh, you introduced a character who could actually match blows with Superman, which huh. you almost never get. Not really, you know what I mean? Uh, you got it, an interesting tie into his backstory. Like Doomsday, I guess you could say he's probably the only best one, right? Yeah. Once again, everyone has their thing, and I think a big part of it was the retconning, but they retcon Superman every five years, man. Do you have to? I mean, it's really hard to pick up the reins of somebody else's writer's work and be like, well, damn. It's even beyond oh, that. This guy's <laughs> right. I mean, this this character's got about, I think, I don't know if he's, no, we must be approaching 100 years of Superman. It should be in yeah. the next 10 years, I think. Yeah. Actually, probably so, in the next five years. I think it's 1920. That's a lot. Let's see, Action Comics, number one. Oh, you did see that they resold Action Comics number one for a higher price again, right? Oh, did they now, huh? Uh, yeah, the, you know what's great? Okay. Right now, so Never mind, we're still, reason, we're still, uh, we're still uh, a little more than 10 years out. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there seems to be some weird comic boom that's happening right now. I think it's only just because people have nothing else to do and... And just more disposable income. With yeah, the, but uh, I'd also say comics are getting more popular, man. I thought that too. I was like, you know, I think maybe they're just getting more popular. That's what I was hoping too. Uh, I, and I'll say this. I don't mean general week to week comics like me and you read, but I mean comics and comic characters in general are more popular. So people who were maybe introduced to these characters in the movies are now finding reasons to go back and buy these older, yeah. older comics. That and then two, like these other publishers are doing a really good job of putting out some really good books. Like Boom Studios, like these last past yeah. two years, have just really been putting some good books out. Like with I will say, they've had characters. some stiff competition in that they just didn't have before. And no offense to Image or Valiant, but they've always been swinging up. You know what I mean? Yeah. They've, with the exception of maybe Spawn 
and one or two flagship titles like Exo Man of War or something, like they just they just couldn't compete, right? Like they didn't have the history, they didn't have the the long term thing, and I think even more than that, because of the way history and uh, the market worked at that time, right? There was sort of like uh, the same thing Diamond has. They had a monopoly, right? Marvel yeah. had and DC had a monopoly on the media outlets and the things. And now that, you know, Bloodshot came out as a movie, you know, we, we have all these comics publishing companies that can exist because of new media, right? Because of digital printing and uh, creations and more accessible ways to ship through the internet you know what i mean as opposed to just getting it through to people at the comic store i feel like boom and a lot of these newer studios have like maybe not changed the whole game but added a new aspect that's forcing companies to like respond yeah yeah they yeah they just they just been coming out with some really great things like have you been still reading uh once in future still the one Was with I the king that? arthur <sighs> Yes. Like, yeah, like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. That like one's been a, pretty a good. Twist on the whole story a little yeah. bit of it. Um, yeah, I've been like, reading that one. Good. Like uh, that's been good. Um, something killing the children's been pretty good. Um, like I said, Mighty Morphin from Power Rangers was really freaking good when they redid the whole thing. They did a great job of modernizing it. That one's Maybe definitely their so flagship good. title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right now it is. I mean, yeah, they they've been going all in with it like this. Well, how they? Been, how long have they had the title now? Oh my gosh, it's been now three years. I know now. they did, I know that they recently did a like not a reboot, so, but like a consolidation. Yeah, they, re they recently we did a kind of like a reboot. They just kind of did like a number one kind of thing where right. kind of get readers to kind of hop right, on. Right. Yeah. It, it wasn't was actually a reboot. It was a consolidation and like bringing all the story in together so that people could start yeah. it one. Which made yeah. sense. I remember you were talking about it, how they had started it and they were showing uh Fuck, what are the two thug name thugs names again from the city? The fat guy uh, and the bone. bone and scroll or some skull skull. Maybe? It's skull and bone. Yeah. Okay. Those guys, right? You talking about how they were in the first issue and how they had been purposefully right pulling in all this stuff to make readers feel the nostalgia of old shows while still like introducing the fact that like this is our yeah power rangers right mm -hmm. and so i i mean they that's definitely been their flagship title and i think it was a great title because it gave them something that wasn't already a niche right there was nobody making really good power ranger comics real like they were okay comics before boom but like they made good comics right mm -hmm. and so they they cornered a market right where they didn't have to get a character from some other company or any of that that was already in con contest or had a long history that they had to compete with. You know what I mean? And so I think they set themselves up a really solid foundation and gave themselves time as a company to, to produce these really good comics. Now, you know what I mean? Now that mm -hmm. they've made this comic series and been successful for a while, they are able to apply their knowledge to their new books and to the titles that are originals for them you know what i mean and are are yeah. basically all theirs mm -hmm. and so i'm i'm excited i mean we've talked about how a lot of the i mean a lot of weeks now most of my time is spent not on marvel or dc uh, yeah there's, there's a lot of good books out there there's, uh, there's one this week you should check out it's called home, home. Image, actually um, did you check out that uh geiger no, I, I know didn't we were talking it. about it. I heard some people liked it, but I, I thought I didn't we had talked about it. it. Maybe we didn't talk about it. Um, but this it one's pretty good. Young yeah. boy turned away from his mother while seeking asylum at the U.S. border. Something begins to uh, change in him. And it isn't just the trauma, anxiety, and guilt you'd expect. He doesn't know it yet, but his... Uh, but it's the onset of superhuman abilities that will change his life forever. Hmm. So, sounds pretty um, interesting. Yeah, sounds interesting. Uh, Once again, I think a lot of what it comes down to for a new a new comic book is concept. Having a good concept is something that uh, keeps readers right, and then when you make a good story around your good concept, you keep readers. Right. And so a lot of those new boom comics have very very good like uh conceptual ideas and i think they're really well written as well after that so i'm, I'm excited for them their, their art's really pretty good 
uh we we are getting towards the end of our time i think today yeah, i was gonna say yeah i was gonna say we probably but uh, <laughs> i guess before we end it off then i'll just uh read off some of my quick list here um so we did talk to uh, one talk about jupiter's legacy so that's right here. that's I, I saw some oh. of the preview stuff and i mean it looking good man yeah, it looks pretty good may 7th I'll, I'll check it out um I'll, i've never read his comic book from mark miller but i haven't i i think i'm go not gonna for once because i've really been enjoying watching invincible and not having yeah. read it before I, I did want to say that and it's the only comment i want to make and i won't go super deep into it because there's a whole reasons discussion that i'd like <laughs> and think this way but it's i think invincible is one of the few times that i actually prefer the cartoon to the source material okay and and not just like as on a personal level but on a critical level there's a lot of things and a lot of choices and changes that they yeah. made just that i think more made the story roll a little better there's some that are worse too but but the pacing is i think a little better in the uh animated and then some of some of their decisions as far as contextual uh stuff such as i guess it's a spoiler but it's been out for two or three weeks now so like in the at the end of the first episode right where omni man bodies everybody uh -huh. that's so different in the comics right like in the comics he just like it's like nothing he literally goes in everybody's dead in three seconds and he leaves no evidence yeah and then they they made they went really into this one they, they really uh, did and i think it was a really good decision for a couple reasons like points to me almost on an animated level you know oh, absolutely i i keep telling people my best way to describe this is if spider-man the animated series met yeah. the boys there that's go. my that description works. of that it works. because <laughs> because it really is a teen heroes you know learning to do your powers but it's got the brutality of the boys like and i appreciate that it's realistic in its depiction of violence it's one of the things that they just don't do enough like they did a little bit in falcon and the winter soldier right when she kicks homie and he's he's or she punches homie and he's done for oh, yeah. Well, yeah if a super soldier hits you yeah you'd be done for if they hit you full power you know what mm -hmm. i mean it just knock your block off so it's right, cool right. to see that stuff and once again there's a bunch of reasons i won't get into them because we're already at the end right. of it but i i really yeah. did like the cartoon uh who knows if it'll stay better I'll in start. my opinion than the comic but i i actually can't even go farther than the comic because they still haven't caught up <laughs> <laughs> so, so we'll um, see and then uh, if you haven't checked it out guys yet there looney tunes uh the space jam trailer just dropped a few days yeah, ago i forgot about and, that with uh, lebron yeah. uh, people are like it kind of it, it almost feels like well are we, is the space jam means rather ready player one <laughs> you have to watch it you, you, you know, can it's, I'll, I'll have it. to i'll have to check it out what i've heard is i've actually heard pretty good things it considering looks okay. it looks good to me i, I heard it out. kept the the energy of the first one or something yeah i, I think know. that's kind of i still feel like the energy's there at least though. and i think to be fair it's looney tunes so like yeah you know what i mean like i think back I on every looney why, tunes movie they're all looney tunes movie people yeah are expecting such more than, i don't know it's just weird people, people are always are. expecting something instead of and I'm, i've tried to really temper myself with that where it's like don't go into this expecting something because it's just a fun ride, you know? Just well, if you once again, fun, well, it, it, then right. you're good. And, <laughs> and if you wanted to see something you expected, you'd do it yourself, right? <laughs> or you'd watch something you've already watched. You're, the whole yeah. point of watching something new is to see something new, something unexpected. And then uh, we did finally get the release of Black Widow, which was crazy that they said that they were not going to do a Disney Plus release, but they're going to do a Disney Plus premiere access. They, release. They, they got pushed into it, man. They're, they, I know, they, I know. They, and here's the truth of the matter, and it's what I said way back then. They should have just fucking put it out and took yeah. the goddamn loss. They should have just, because now they get us take the loss and they lost a year of fucking time. Mm -hmm. uh, at least a year so sucks to be them but as right. much as wonder woman maybe didn't make a ton of money it made enough money probably to get its production value back actually i'm not actually sure it did i, I better go look that up before i say that <laughs> and then uh e3 looks like it's coming back here that, this that, uh, year um, i was happy yeah that's gonna be cool I'm, i was always sad that we had kind of lost our kind of gaming summit stuff I, I, yeah you know we have some of the other ones like game con and some of the like those the, ones, the truth is like, since g4 like existed the bigger one to me it, always. it did the truth is since g4 ex has went out of went oh, out we have it supposed to be coming back x play really? so, that's okay. what they're saying you look that up look that stuff I will, all right, uh, rumors of that coming back 
Um, so I was, I was uh, other than that, too, my that last, was the real one. Yeah. My other list here is also if you want to check out the long Damn. Halloween part one just came I out. Did. Too, so. Yeah, I, I've I already watched that one, actually, even though <laughs> I hadn't watched. Well, it's because I want to watch Godzilla and King Kong on a big screen, but I don't and, need uh, to watch that on the big screen. Right. So. And then the Powerpuff Girls live action pictures are starting to <laughs> arise. <laughs> I saw them already. Chloe Bennett is one of them. Yeah. Uh, I just don't give a fuck. <laughs> I literally yeah. can't be bothered to give a fuck. And that was kind of, it was not weirded <laughs> out by the choice of Professor Oak, but I was like, eh, really him? I guess. All right. That's whatever. whatever. <laughs> Here's um, the thing. If we were going to question casting, I don't even, I can't, then, you know what I mean? It's too much, too much I for me. That my last thing was that the, supposedly there is a live action Gundam movie in the works as well too. I did hear about that, although I don't think we've got anything super solid on no, it yet. Really, too. They're just supposedly in the works, so we'll still see what that what goes on with that. But other than yeah, that I mean, also too, there's a new anime as a Black Samurai. So I, we're gonna, yeah, I did hear yeah. about that. It's supposed to be really good and based on yeah. true story, so that's supposed to be so cool. We'll, we'll get that as well uh, coming out. And then uh, I'm Bad honest, Batch, I'm uh, honestly trailer. real excited for that. I love it. They're like Bad Batch. You mean the end of Clone Wars? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, May the 4th, it will come out, which is a perfect time. Uh, and then we did get the Spiral movie, which is the Saw next movie. With yeah. Rock. Um, is a release date now only in theaters for this one, I, which is at least cool for that. Uh, but I it just had to be another Saw movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll it, see. It's, it's one of those ones. The honestly, the Saw movies are basically get hit or miss, right? Like, yeah. After last three, one wasn't too bad. last one, well, last one wasn't bad. that bad. No, uh, well, wait, which was that the one with the laser face That's the one? one? Remember when those lady, the people are in the barn, and then they like pumped her up with like drugs because she was like a druggie, and like they oh. they had to like. Was it one the one? The was it the one where they're like they ended up going there, but it was actually one that had been done a long time ago already, and it was. I so yeah, 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 I think yeah, yeah. I actually did watch that one in theaters. <laughs> <laughs> I think I remember because it was in 3D, wasn't it? Uh, you know, I think it was. I think it was one marketed as one of those. I, I think I do remember that one. Uh, it was all right. I, it was. I, I watched the Saw movies and the original ones for the plot. Not for the mm -hmm. gruesome deaths or thing, but I loved it because of some the, of the long some plot. Of the deaths are pretty thought, oh, well thought out, though. Oh, I no, they, they, <laughs> the deaths in Saw are actually probably the best in horror. I'd say they just do it really <laughs> well. Hostile, yeah, like some hostile deaths. Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> Even though, well, those are brutal, but saws are specific. They yeah. are like the hostile deaths were like realistic, right? They were very realistic of like a torture chamber from some sick fuck. Oh, but Saw is like if you gave like, I don't know, like uh, Da Vinci an evil personality and was like, have fun. You know, yeah. you literally have as much fun as you can making the <laughs> trap. We don't care about the actual death, but just make the trap dope. You know what I mean? That's that's how I feel about the Saw death and kill designs. But the reason I loved Saw was originally was the story, the mm -hmm. deep kind of hinty story where he's always been in the room and you could have seen the answer from the beginning, right? Or from halfway through the movie if you were really good at putting the pieces together. Well, uh yeah, that, I that's usually why I enjoy those. Right either once I once I finally I'm like, oh well, damn, I, I would have never thought. <laughs> well, and, and and that's the problem is in the later ones they don't do it right, right? Like you never would have been able to figure it out. It was someone else entirely, and there were no good hints that would have actually yeah. told you. So the earlier ones did good. I'd I'd say up until two or three, Saw was pretty solid as far as plot I think writing. The last one that I thought was pretty good was the one when they're all stuck in the house. Yeah, that's that's a three. That's probably three. Yeah. No, 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 no. I think, no, 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 no. I think that's two. I, I, think I think that's actually that two. Sorry. Started uh, going downhill for me after that, and then the last one right before the they just did now was okay to me. It was alright, but I, I, I will say I will say that as far as Saws, the last one was pretty okay. It was probably like top half because i can't remember there's like eight of them now or something i don't know i think this will be the eighth one now, actually, my, so my, my list still goes one i think it's i think the one you're talking about is two which is the one with the house and then three is the one uh where they kill him 
and he dies. Oh, yeah. And then after that, they're all garbage because he's not even really in them. And they, mm-hmm. you can tell there's no real heavy plot planning for it, right? They're like, all right, make this guy the villain and figure it out. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, like, <laughs> but uh, uh, who knows? Maybe they'll do really good. Uh, Plus, you've got Chris was... Rock in it, so. Yeah, I, I was uh, kind of, you know, I was kind of skeptical on that, but I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll watch this because I heard I want to check out the other one. There's another horror movie that Kevin James did. I don't know if you've heard of that one. Well, no, but he did really? More, yeah, ch- uh, check it out now here when we get up. But it's a more serious tone movie that he did, and he takes a more serious character on this. He's not. Is, is it a horror uh, film or is it just a serious film? It's, it's a horror film, that's for sure. It's almost oh, like one is of it the, this one. Okay, it's Becky. I know the yeah, one. You're Becky. Yep, 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 yep. I, and, I uh, never saw it, but I had seen it. I just didn't I heard some pick things it up. from it, so I wanted to I'll check, check it, out. it out. It's on my yeah. list here. <laughs> cool. I'm I'm interested for it. I'm always up for good horror movies because I feel like there's so few and far between of real honest good horror movies mm-hmm. that don't just rely on on tons of gore or cheap jump scares, which are fine too. I enjoy those as well. But to have a really deep kind of horror movie, I think, is a little something more than that, than just those two things. You know what I mean? Like, one of my best classic examples of horror is The Thing. You know what I mean? Oh, I love that. That's it's, my favorite movie. It doesn't matter how old I get or how cheesy the effects look. Because they really they don't. They look pretty me. decent. Yeah, they look great to me still to this well, day. They, they were always a little off on certain parts for me, but for the most part, I mean, the, the classic designs did pretty well, and th- that movie especially had some really good physiological stuff, you know what I mean, with the dogs and the, the morphing. So I'm always up for really good horror. I just, I, I sometimes feel like I'm, like, not actually hit with a really good horror movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, yeah. But I, I, it's all depending, and once again, that's all personal preference. But yeah, we've we've been at it for a little while. Yeah, I was uh, that, was other, that was all on my list here. I think that's pretty much all I got. I mean, there's there's we could go forever. You know what I mean? Talking about whatever comic <laughs> got released this week. But I think we covered all my main talking points, which were basically Invincibles, New Suicide Squad, uh, Falcon Winter Soldier, comics a little bit here, toys we covered for you and. We did a little bit of gaming stuff. I think the problem is gaming is not really oh, popping off oh, right now. That was what I was going to say, too. I'll have to check it out, but we'll see on the next uh, podcast. I'll we'll talk about it. But the uh, new Outriders game is something that's been talked about. I, this, I uh, have heard about so it. I just don't know anything like about it. Mixed with Gears of War is what I've heard. Ooh, if it's anything like Gears of War, I'll buy it. Uh, but uh, if you have Game Pass on uh, Xbox, it I just do, actually is available uh, on their list here today. Oh, shit. I actually... I actually meant to cancel it like months ago, but it's like five dollars a month, so I literally have just it's you not worth the time to go find the thing nice, to cancel. It's a nice thing to have because you know it's, there is some games on there that I have gotten to play that I was like I didn't feel like buying the money to play it, but it was cool to play and then that was it. I'm done with it. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool too, is the the fact that when it's not a game that you want to keep, right? Like you just want to play it for a while or a little bit or beat it one time, then it's nice. Or just play that game like, oh, hey, I heard about that years ago, but I never wanted to spend oh, the cash on th- that's probably the best because those games you can usually just find, you know what I mean? You're not waiting for it to come up free on get pass. But yeah, but, we've, we've, we've... That, yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, cancel yeah. it there. <laughs> yeah, we'll, say, we'll keep going forever if we don't. So but we'll, we'll have more stuff to talk about next week. Hopefully there's still plenty of things we didn't really cover all the way in depth and Hopefully there will be more news this week. (laughs) So awesome. Well, thank you as always for being here, man. And hopefully everybody who watched enjoyed as well. And we'll see you next time on Comic Convos. If you enjoyed watching or want to support the channel, remember to attack that like button. Subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch, or join our Discord using the link on screen or in the description below so that you can get daily updates on all of our uploads and live streams. We know we're not perfect and we can always improve, so please visit our Discord or comment below with a critique or a compliment to let us know how we can improve ourselves. Finally, if you're just starting for more content, you can become an honorary member of 3D Productions at patreon.com slash 3D and get exclusive access for as low as a dollar a month.